Well, hello world. Welcome to Raccoon Point Studios. I'm Sean Bombs. This is the AVM where we talk about audio, video, and music production. Welcome to part two of our series, Five Essential Guitar Pedals for Beginners. Today we're going over compression. We're featuring the Behringer CS400 Compressor Sustainer. And you can find this pedal online for $21, making it a great beginner's pedal. Because if you don't like it, it's $21. So that's how we can find out sounds we like and don't like pretty inexpensively. So before we go over the functionality of these four knobs, plus the sound of this pedal, I just want to tell you why guitar players use compressor pedals. We use them to even out the level of our playing. And uh, these work by reducing the dynamics of our playing. So if I play loud, depending on how I have the set, it's going to knock the level down. It's going to make it a little bit lower. And if I'm playing light, depending on how I have it set, it could bring up low level detail so I can get more articulation. You'll hear things that you would not hear otherwise. Let me give you an example of what compression can do to even out the level of your guitar. I'm going to start without the compressor on and pay attention to the light parts of what I'm playing compared to the loud part when I play, okay? All right, now we're gonna do it with the compressor. So hopefully you could hear the difference between the compressed and uncompressed signal. If you could, please hit the like, hit the subscribe, and let's move on. All right, so let's go over the four knobs here and what they do, starting with level. And level is the output volume of this pedal. So you come in from your guitar into the pedal, goes through the circuitry, and then this is your final volume after you're compressing. The reason we have a level here is because when you're compressing, like I was saying earlier, it will drop the volume down. And this is a way to make that level back up. So if it's knocking it down too far, you can go all the way to max to try to get it back to your original guitar signal. Also, if you are using the sustain, it usually will make the volume a lot louder and that therefore you'll have to knock the level back so it's really good to have it and I'll just show you real quick it's really simple let's see if I can get it to be even so this is my guitar sound and then we'll put it in you can hear the compression is making it lower so let's turn it back up and now it's too loud so we're gonna bring it back down a little bit so you can hear it's now pretty much the same level it's never gonna be exact because you're also bringing up low-level detail and the stuff that you're playing you'll hear even more it can seem like it's louder even though it's not. And then you can turn it all the way up. So as you can see, you could use it to level up your guitar if you really wanted to. So let's move on to the tone knob. And the tone knob is basically a one knob equalizer. And it's going to give you a brighter sound when you go to the right, which is high, and a darker sound when you go to the left, which is low. And in the middle, it should be pretty close to your original guitar sound. If you compress, and you notice your guitar sounds uh, duller, you can brighten it up with this knob and vice versa. If it's too bright, you can take some of that high end off. So I will show you first without the compressor.
turn it all the way up bright. And now all the way low. And now without it. Back to the middle. So you can hear the compression is dulling the sound slightly. So I guess I would move it to the brighter side just a little bit. Maybe right there. So next we're going to go over the attack knob and the attack knob just sets the speed in which this compressor reacts to your playing. So all the way to the left is the fastest speed it will react and all the way to the right is the slowest. And you might think to put it at the fastest because you wanted to squeeze it quick but the problem is it can take off so much of the front end of the guitar that you lose the pick sound of your guitar and it can dull the sound a little bit so the slower you know happy medium you can let some of that natural um, first initial hit of your guitar come through without killing the sound immediately let's go over the attack and see what we got Let's go over to the fastest. And let me try to play something faster so you can hear it really kick in. And let's play that without the uh, compressor. So you can hear it really squashes it, watch. But you might want that sound for certain things. Me personally, I would rather have it a little bit slower. So it lets the, the uh, transients through. Let's try it fast again. The faster it is, it's going to kill it. It's going to take away the energy. Um, so I like a happy medium. So I go a little bit above 12. All right, so that's the attack time. So moving on to the sustain, what the sustain knob does is what it says on the tin and when you go to the right, it's going to sustain the note or chord longer than it would without the pedal. And if it's all the way to the left, it actually makes it sustain less than what it would do without the pedal. And it makes your signal quieter. I'm gonna give you an example of how long it sustains with and without the pedal. So you can hear it dies pretty quick, and then... You can hear it has a slight distortion, or a nice amount of distortion going on in there, and it's too much sustain, so, for me. I mean, you if you use it like that, it would be used in a creative sense, most likely, but it's not something you would use all the time. So now you can hear it boosts the signal, so you always have to mess with the level, and that's after all that, like I said in the beginning. Let's 
Let's try it with the attack as fast as possible. So as you can tell, that's overly doing it. And um, my thing for this pedal would be something around right there. And yeah, something like this. Let me check it out. Yeah, that'd be my happy medium right there where it's just bringing up the low level and then when I play a strong chord it's going to keep it there without it getting too loud. So hopefully you understand compressor pedals for guitars a little bit better and if you do please hit the like button hit the subscribe and join us in the next one where we're talking about modulation pedals and we'll see you then bye bye.